the biblical truth of our hymn. It came upon the midnight clear. Warning. I've got my Bible open. Spoiler alert. I've got my Bible open. All right. Was an American Unitarian parish minister. Now let me write this down from the 2008 copyright Christian Broadcast Network, Inc. Unitarians do not believe in the Trinity. What on earth have they got a hymn in a hymn book about Jesus? They don't believe in the Trinity, neither do they believe that Jesus is divine. In other words, Jesus is not God to the Unitarian. They say they worship God only and are attempted to dis demonstrate a genuine religious community without doctrinal conformity. They believe in rationalism, social action, and inherent goodness of humans. I guess they don't take the newspaper and read the headlines. They must be quite shocked at what America has become. The goodness of humans. The overpopulation of jails. Because they do not believe in salvation through Jesus Christ. Who would have to be divine in order to save us. True. They have developed a humanistic type of religion that makes salvation dependent on ethical good works. So when somebody comes up to you, if you believe Jesus Christ, or you say, I'm a good person. They may be a Unitarian. Maybe, maybe Catholic. A lot of religions say they're good. So that's Unitarian. It came upon a midnight clear. Edmund Hamilton Sears, an American. What's America know about religion? What's America know about the Bible? Unitarian parish minister. Parish. Parish. That's a great name for religious institute building. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. But they call their builders and their, their occupation of their ministers perish. That's interesting. Minister and author who wrote a number of theological works. Influencing the 19th century liberal Protestants. So here is a man who has wrote theological works, and he doesn't believe in the Trinity. He doesn't believe Jesus is God. They don't believe in the salvation of, of uh, Jesus Christ upon the cross. And you're going to allow this hymn. Christian life. A non-Christian into a Christian hymnal. What's going on here, folks? This is why we have the biblical truth of our hymns. This is why I have to do this study. And it's coming upon the midnight clear as we get closer and closer to Bale's birthday and the Bale Bush and the nonsense that people will say, put Christ back in Christmas, which was never there. Where you're going to have the penis Christmas tree and the vagina of the, the wreath that hangs on the door. Why don't you put that to study? Why do wreaths have a red bow at the bottom? Look at the moon and the women on that one. So, Sears originally wrote the song as a melancholy reflection on his times while minister at Wayland, Massachusetts. So this hymn doesn't even have to do it. This deals with what this idiot has believed and lived in Massachusetts. Do you know the story of Massachusetts? How they ran off the Christians and ran them off to Rhode Island and they had their, their, their big hats and they had the witches being killed in Salem and they had the congregational church that was taking the property and, and, and rebuking and scolding and get, trying to get rid of, of the separatists? Who were Bible believing Christians saved under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? You do know the, the, the sources and the foundation of Massachusetts. Yeah, they were pilgrims. Yeah, they came over to the Geneva Bible, but they didn't stay. You and uh, you had, Sears preached the equity of women and men. 
evidently he's not a Bible reader. He's not a study of the Bible. He's not a believer of the Bible. God does put men. Well, let's let's just point out one thing as far as men and women. Women do not assert the authority over men. So where would Sears be theologically, as he's a writer of theology work, where would his stance be as far as women preachers? I wonder. The full song comprises of five stanzas, and we got five stanzas in ours. Some versions, including the United Methodist hymnal and Lutheran book of worship, omit verse 3. While others, including the hymnal in 1982, omit verse 4. Johnny Mathis recorded the song on his first Christmas album, Merry Christmas, 1958. In 1962, Bing Crosby had a melody of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, they don't, and the song included on his Christmas album, I Wish You Were a Merry Christmas. A recording of the song by Daryl Hall and John Oakes hit, Number one on the Billboard Hot Adult Modern Day Tracks chart, 1993. Did you get that? Did you get that name? Do you know where it stands? Number one on the Billboard Hot Adult Modern Day Tracks. Glenn Clam Campbell recorded a song on his Christmas album, Home for the Holidays. I guess they did good work so God would be pleased. I guess they think that in heaven we're going to play their records. This may be the only common song Christmas carol in our hymnals. Ready? Drum roll, please. Blah, blah, blah. That does not mention the birth of Christ. <gasps> the focus is rather on the song of the angels. <laughs> now you know I got my Bible open. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. Remember that's what their theology? Remember they don't believe the salvation of God through Jesus Christ and blood of God. Acts 20, 28 on the, on the cross where Christ's blood that was spilt out for salvation. They don't believe in that. But they believe peace on earth and goodwill to men. Do these people who are Unitarians, do they live in a policeless city or town? Do they, would they have the need to have to call the police with their goodwill to men? Have they ever done a public ministry, have people come up to them in their face and, and rebuke them for what the Bible? Luke 2.14. You probably get tired of this verse. It's the song of the angels. Luke 2.14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Wait a minute. What's it? Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. They misquoted from, it's not King James. Let's start that one off. King James Church. Saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, singing a hymn that's not King James and has nothing to do with the birth of our Savior. But I skipped the verse that we usually do. 2.13 And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, 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 say it with me, saying. Don't sing it with me, say it with me, saying. There's a big difference between saying and singing. All right? There's a big difference. I can say, hark the herald angels sing, or hark the herald angels sing. You'll be telling me to shut up. You sound terrible. You don't want me to sing. You want me to say. You want me to say preaching the gospel. You sure don't want me to sing the gospel. And yet when I say a statement like that, you've got hymn writers in the hymnals that don't know the difference between saying and singing. You need to send them back to kindergarten and go through all the 12 grades again. Now, Junior, this is one, two, three, A, B, C. You miss 
quote the Bible. Um, as UM hymnal editor, I don't know what UM is, Carlton Young puts it so well. The hymn's central theme contrasts the scourge of war with the songs of the angels. Peace to God's people on earth. Blah. Makes God sick. Revelation 3. He observes that this is one of the earliest social gospel hymns written in the United States of the America. You know what the fruits of America are for religion? Mormonism, Jehovah Witnessism, Charismaticism, and Unitarianism. America is not the, the fruit and the foundations of the root of religion. Those are the children of Ham. I mean, excuse me, not Ham Steph. The Orientals. Not Japheth. Japheth, he's the worker. He's the adventurer. He's the one that goes places. He's the one that does things. Shem is the rel religion. Shem is the worshiper of God. Shem is where Israel came from. So, uh, the original stanza three, missing from the Methodist hymnal, sheds light on the poet's concern about social situation in the United States in the mid-19th century. So when we come to the stanza three, don't think about Jesus, think about the social standard of America. And how many Baptist churches are going to sing this garbage? I guess you already know where I stand about this hymn. <sighs> it came upon a midnight clear. How do we know what time it was? And there were in the same country shepherds abiding the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. The Jewish biblical night begins at 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. There was no midnight mention. Now, midnight was given for the death angel that killed the firstborn in Egypt. Samson laid, to, laid with the harlot and carried the city gates. Boaz woke up at midnight to find a woman at his foot or feet. Accused time that a harlot switched the dead baby from the live baby. 1 Kings 3, Psalms 119, to pray, to rise and praise God, midnight, <coughs> midnight to cry for the ten virgins, Mark 13, midnight could have been the time of the master, yet Sears hated the servant-master relationship, remember? He's into social things, he would have nothing to do with a server-master relationship, that would have been vile and wicked to him. I mean, after all, men and women are the same. Luke 11, a friend visits at midnight for food for a visitor. Midnight, Paul and Silas sang in jail. Paul preaches to midnight. Midnight, the seamen think that they see land. But no baby Jesus was born. According to this, this is not about the birth of Jesus. And it is Jesus was born. He's not God according to the theology. And remember, this is about the social issues issues in Seer's time. That glorious song of old. You can't have a song about the Savior when the Savior has never been born. From angels bending near the earth. I don't know where he got bending from. To touch their harps of gold. Those harps of gold are over, over, way over in the book of Revelation. There's no harps mentioned in Luke chapter 2, the birth of Jesus Christ. None at all. Revelation 5.8. We had taken the book, the four beasts, the four and twenty 
elders fell down before the Lamb, capital L. They don't believe in the Lamb. Having every one of them harps. Revelation 14, 2, And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of the harpers harping with their harps. Revelation 15, 2, And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And then they had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the name of his, over the number of his name. Stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Those are the ones in the tribulation that get victory over the Antichrist. By God in Jesus Christ. Revelation 18, 22, and the voice of harpers and musicians, pipe. Listen, that's Paul gives in First Corinthians, and even things without life given sound, whether pipe or harp, there's a distinguishing sound. Harp is mentioned in Daniel chapter 3 as one of the instruments of the worship of the golden image. And you get this nonsense, we're all going to go to heaven and we're going to have a harp. We don't get that out of the Bible. We get out of this junky music. Peace on earth. All right. Peace on earth. Goodwill to, to men. Bible says, Luke 2.14, glory to God in the highest. God first. Notice how God's going. Notice how he removed God from Luke 2.14. And he went right to peace on earth, goodwill to men. All right, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace. They put the peace before the earth. On earth, peace. Goodwill toward men. You got that right, goodwill toward men. From heaven's all gracious king. Now, that's a capital K. But that can't be Jesus in their hymns. Because in order for Jesus to be king, he has to be God, king of kings, lord of lords, the lamb, capital L. Behold the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. It's the word of God that gets on that horse and comes back at the, at the, uh, at the second advent. They don't believe Jesus is God. They're going to bring the kingdom in without Jesus by the goodwill of men. So that king, going by their doctrinal teachings and traditions, I'm going to assume that's not Jesus. Do you remember what that gentleman said? Carl Jung, the editor hymnal? The hymn's central theme contrasts the score of war with the song of the angels. And then we saw something, where does it say? This may be the only common sung Christmas carol in our hymnals that does not mention the birth of Christ. So if it's not mentioned the birth of Christ, who is his king? Capital K. Now, like I've said, Jesus is not king of the church, but he's coming back into Jerusalem, the throne of David, king of kings and lord of lords. He has to do that as God. But we've already looked and studied that through the Unitarian, Jesus is not God, so he can't be king. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. They don't sing. Ready? They don't sing. You ready? Luke 2, 13. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying. Man, by the time we get done with this, if you're to follow all these, you're going to get right into your heart. That during this period of time, angels don't sing. Still through the cloving skies. Cloven. We got that here. Cloven. Part. Participle of Clee, divided, parted, pronounced cloven. Webster's 18.28. Now, I could spend the time to read to you Luke chapter 2 entirely. All right? 
Let's pick up verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy, which shall be to all people. And for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. <coughs> That's Jesus Christ. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing. Where did you see what or hear? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Where did you hear the, the skies ripped open, cleaved, departed? Yet this moron writes, still through cloven skies. They come with peaceful wings. Unfurled. You're going to find Genesis to Revelation. There are no winged angels. The cherubims are winged. But no angel in the Bible, they show up as men. They do not have wings. That's a perversion. And still their heavenly music, there's no heavenly music now, floats over all the weary world. Really? You're trying to tell me approximately 5 B.C. in Bethlehem, Everyone's putting himself down for sleep. It's been a long, hard taxation day. And Joseph and Mary can't find no room at the end, so they settle somewhere where there's a manger. And everybody in Bethlehem, hey! Oh, do you hear that music? I hear music. Listen, when music comes to be in life, that's only from television. You know that music when the, when the axe murderer is going to come and chop everybody in the camp the dead, then you hear the music. When the, the police detective is about to solve the case, then you get the music. Never once in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is there music. Dum, 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 dum. It'd be nice. Wouldn't it be great if the world was like that and your family's out walking at night and if someone's going to come and kill them, they'll start hearing, dun, 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 dun. Oh, got to turn around, someone's coming. This guy's in fantasy land. Seeing angels with wings and music and blah, 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 blah. Weary world. The guy's making me weary. Above its sad and lonely plains, and been on hovering wing. This guy's in love with wing. You cannot, and there's no time to go into uh, every angel we could look at in the Bible, and they would describe, honey, this man visited me. He's, a, he's like the angel of God. How do you know? Well, he never said he had wings. He gave me this prophecy from God. Told me about my child. Lot saw three angels come into Sodom. He had no idea. They were just men coming in. He said, let me give you some meal. And then the, the Sodomites are in. They're knocking at the door. And we want a feather from those angels. We want a feather from the... No, they want to have sex with those men. I get excited with it. And every... No, excuse me. And ever or it's babble sounds... Babel? Do you know what happened at Babel in the Bible? Let's men go to God by our own tower. Let's get religion. Let's make a steeple into heaven. We can make ourselves a Unitarian name. All great names, Babel. That's what this guy is. This is what this, uh, let me show you the Bible this, this hymn should be. That's what this song should be. Nonsense. Babel is the foundation of Babylon. Ooh. 
Where you get your Easter bunny? You get the one with all the boobies they worship and all that. Nimrod. This guy's a Nimrod. Right in this garbage. Bless the angel sing. Ready? Luke chapter 2. You guys are going to get this as a memory verse. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying. You know, I keep quote John 3.16 where I preach in the street. They know John 3.16. You're going to know Luke 2.13. You get done with all these, you're going to know it. All right, now, which hymn were we were supposed to pay attention to? Let me go back. Uh, he says, I, was it the third one? Uh, observes. I forget. I, I mentioned that one of these hymns was it was his life in America. Uh, where'd it go? Forgive me for a minute. It's here. Like the person who didn't study the Bible, it's in there. Uh, social reforms. I think it's three. Is there's that one of the earliest social gospel hymns written in the United States? The original stanza three is missing from the from the Methodist hymnals. A stanza three, which we're going to do now, sheds light on the poet's concerns about the social situation in the United States mid 19th century. Well, if we were supposed to be talking about a carol about the birth of Jesus Christ, it wasn't the 19th century. There was no Americans. There were a bunch of Native Americans waiting for Columbus to go on his vacation cruise to the Bahamas. That the Catholics would come over, invade the land, and take the women, and take the gold, and everything, and go back to England, and have, uh, what's his name there, get the tobacco, and have England start smoking. Well, let's read about America by a Unitarian, Mr. Sears. Yet, with the woes of sin, okay, I agree with that, and the strife the world has suffered long, I believe that, why don't you put the USA? Beneath the heavenly hymn, what's a heavenly hymn? What is the name of the heavenly hymn? What is the title? What are the words of the heavenly hymn? Have rolled 2,000 years of wrong. If this is about his concerns in the 19th century of the United States, it hasn't been 2,000 years. Now of all mankind, and I'm going to read this again. Yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the heavenly hymn has rolled 2,000 years of wrong. I'm going to go back to the 2008 Christian Broadcasting Network. Unitarians do not believe in the Trinity. They do not believe in Jesus as divine. They say they worship God only and attempted to demonstrate genuine religious community without doctrinal conformity. They believe in rational and social action, inherit goodness of humans. This guy is a backslider from the Unitarian belief by verse 3. Yet the woes of sin, the strife of the world has suffered long beneath the heavenly hymn and rolled 10,000 years of wrong. I thought humans were getting better. I thought we were getting more greater and great. And this is one of those stanzas that is removed from hymnals. Uh, let's see. Some versions, including the United Methodist Hymnal and the Lutheran Book of Worship, omit verse 3. 3 is the only really verse I agree with on this nonsense. This guy's written. And warring, warring, <laughs> social gospel, warring humankind bears not the tidings which they bring. Oh, hush the noise and cease your strife and hear the angels sing. Luke 2, 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying. 
We are under a curse. We are under sin. Thanks to Adam. We have the second Adam, which is God, which shed God's blood on the cross that we may have eternal hope, eternal life. We have a blessed hope that is in Jesus Christ. And man's only going to get worse. This guy has never had a public ministry because when I have a public ministry and I have Christian friends who are in public ministries, we see that people are not getting better. They're getting worse we get in our ministry people all the time come up to you that's not what Jesus would do not ever studying their Bible eh, eh, you don't say nothing no you don't say nothing hush hush if people were getting better as a Unitarian say they would all come to Jesus yeah stands are four and ye, beneath life's crushing, crushing load, whose forms are bending low, that don't sound good, I'm human, who toil long the climbing way with painful steps and slow, putting me down. Look now for glad golden hours come swiftly on the wing. This guy has got it in for a wing. Oh, rest beside the weary road. And hear the angel sing. Where's the hope? First of all, Luke 2.13, the suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of hosts praising God and saying, Where is your hope? As far as a Unitarian, who this guy is, minister, if there is no Jesus Christ, there is no blessed hope, there is no God to save our souls. The fact is, the Bible says through Jesus Christ, I am saved by Jesus Christ, suffered and died according to the Scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures that Jesus said, I am. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Thomas said, my Lord, my God, I'm dealing with these idiots like Jehovah Witnesses. And the fact is that Jesus is God. My hope rests in Jesus God, that one day the Bible says through the word of God that I'm going to get a brand new body. I will never sin again. I will never have pain or sorrow. One day all tears will be wiped away. One day all sin will be gone. Glory to God in the highest. There are many hymns I can sing praising God in Jesus Christ. For lo, the days are hasting on by prophets seen of old when with their ever circling years shall come to the time foretold death when the new heaven and earth shall own the prince of peace their king It can't be Jesus. According to the Unitarians, because they don't believe Jesus is God. New heaven and new earth. When the new heaven and earth. Excuse me, we get a new earth too. Must be a little mother earth worship there. Not only do we get a new heavens, plural, we get a new earth. That goes to Abraham and his seed. Prince of peace. Their king. Over the Jewish people. The prophets are Jewish. Old Testament. I'm in prophet. I'm in prophecy. I think Philip the Evangelist had, had daughters that were involved in prophecy. I can tell you where you're going to die, where you're going to go. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go to glory, New, New Jerusalem. You reject Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell, then you're going to go to the lake of fire. I can tell you that's going to be seven years of, of tribulation. 
Three and a half years of great tribulation. I can tell you Jesus Christ is coming back on a white horse with a title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I can tell you that the church is going to follow him at that point. I'm going to tell you that God is going to separate the nation from goat nation, from sheep nation. The goat nations get into damnation forever. The sheep nations get to go into millennia for what they've done to the Jews to help them, to glorify and to aid the Jews. And they don't even know what they're doing. Where is New Jerusalem mentioned here? That's where I'm going. As a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, those who are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ get New Jerusalem. Only thing he's got is the new heaven. Shall we go to the Bible? Shall we read the nonsense this guy's doing and match it with the wonder and splendor of the Bible? Let's read uh, Revelation 21 or 22. I think it's both. 21. Revelation 21, verse 1. He says, new heaven and earth. So let's see what the Bible says. Revelation 21, 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So what he has done in this hymn is he has misquoted the King James Bible. He did that with peace on earth and goodwill to men. He has done it with saying that angels sing. He has done it to say angels have wings. He has done to say you know, there are harps of gold. And this guy, according to the, to the biology I found of him, he has a number of theological works. I would say they're nonsense by what we're doing with his carol, birth, whatever you want to call it. Why is this him mentioned in the birth of Christ and it's told by the people of the religion it has nothing to do with the birth of Christ? You should put it there with my eyes have seen the coming of the Lord and you did not. Make a section of the hymnal called Fairy Tale Land. That's the seven dwarfs singing out of the gold mine or whatever they were doing. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Oh, poor Mother Earth. She goes bye bye. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, and out of heaven prepared as a bride adored for her husband. A great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. That's what the Bible says. And all the world send back the song which now the angels sing. <laughs> we'll go back to Luke 2.13. And suddenly there was a angel, suddenly was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, and let's see. Where can we go? And back to 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Now, let's get away from this nonsense of death and sin and burdens. and Oh, man, let's get cheerful here. From eyes, and there shall no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Amen. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, He that sat on the throne, he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. Now you want to go somewhere? Revelation 1. Revelation 1. Revelation 1. Verse 5. 1 5. And from Jesus Christ, okay, there he is. Ready? Who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us 
from our sins in his own blood has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they whom ha which they ought, uh, excuse me, forgive me. And they also which pierced him. That's Jesus. The holes in his hands, his feet, and his side. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. That's Jesus still speaking. All right. Let's go back to 21. Verse 3 is God. Verse 4 is God. Verse 6. And he said unto me. Verse 5. And he that sat on the throne said. Verse 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega. That's God speaking. That's Jesus Christ speaking. From a Unitarian man that wrote this nonsense that tells you by the doctrine of the Unitarian, all men are getting wonderful and great. They haven't looked in a mirror. And deny the deity of Jesus Christ. No wonder he's got crushing load, bending load, toil, painful steps, slow. I've got joy and great things to come. I've got a lively hope. I've got a blessed hope. I've got a great message to tell people. Jesus saves. Jesus is God. And then the Methodist removes sin and strife stands up. Nobody wants to deal with sin. They don't want to hear they're sinners. It's amazing that uh, this guy, the Unitarian, would mention sin. When men are so great and upbound and wonderful, all humanity. Again, this is a carol, not about the birth of Jesus, of the Unitarian Church. This guy is a minister of theology writing who preached, he preached the, equ the equal, yeah, equalness of men and women. And stanza three is about his ways and views of America in the 19th century. And that Johnny Mantis, Bing Crosby, Daryl Hall and John Oakes and Glenn Campbell would pick if they ain't the hymns out of him. They would pick this hymn to make money and to, oh God, aren't you so glad we picked a hymn and sung it for you? God probably has it in a golden record on the walls of, of heaven. Ready to be played when we come home. By a religion that says, hey, if you do good works, you do good, you be a good goober, you get to go to heaven or whatever they believe in. My opinion, this is nonsense. And it's been a while since I have heard this hymn, but I've heard this hymn sung in the church. I don't remember which one. But I've heard it. I've heard it in public, too. And it teaches golden harps and winged angels and nonsense, which is anti-scriptural. You might just mount it up there and put Stands in number six and praise and glorify Satan Claus. And it stands in seven. Let's throw the Easter Bunny in there. With the nonsense of anti-scriptural. And I've read you the scripture. I wish I had time to go through the Bible and show you the angels in the Bible have no wings. But there are resources out there from King James Bible believing Christian preachers and teachers that will teach you the same thing. If I mention some of the names, you would go, <gasps> and then you have a problem because I put that man's name for it over that man's name. The fact is, when I do these things, I do the next hymn or carol that comes up. The very first thing is I look at the words. Who wrote, who wrote the words? 
and maybe the music depends. Usually, music the, the writer of the music doesn't really have anything to do with him. But when I came across the writer of this thing, and to find out he's a Unitarian, not viable. And the fact is, I read names as Lutherans and Methodists, and no, it's sung in Baptist churches. What's wrong with you, song leaders? What would a preacher do if you got up at his pulpit and started teaching Unitarian doctrine? Would you not be invited again? Would you not maybe been thrown out of that pulpit at that moment? And yet you'll get a song leader come up. All right, everybody, let's open up our hymnals to a Unitarian. And nothing said. Why is it that there are hymns today being sung in churches? They completely defy the scriptures. They completely misquote the scriptures. Let's sing another stanza. It ought not to be so. It ought not be so. We have to be on a great ground when we're dealing with hymns, song leaders, and songs of the church. Because we need to know that the hymns, the songs, the instruments, the very foundation of all that is Lucifer. The fallen cherubim. The fallen winged creature of a dragon, of the serpent, of the reptile class, has the roots of the music that made people sing. I write the songs that make you don't want me to sing. I like you get that hymn. I'm gonna get that hymn. Get that song. I write the songs and read the lyrics. As far as Bible and as far as the position and the placement and the story of Lucifer and Satan. He had all the angels singing one day. I will tell you, the angels sang. They're not singing now. They will sing again. But under this realm of Satan, the song leader is gone. The music has been turned off for heaven. Now men sing. God awful rap music. And I'll blow your head away with a pickup truck and a bottle of beer of a country music. And just as worse as the, some of these Christians are done with bluegrass. Listen, the only bluegrass I would know is you put the tidy bowl man in the in the toilet and you got a septic tank in the front yard. That's the bluegrass. Why can't we lift up Jesus Christ and God together as one? We've done many hymns that are so. We've done wonderful great hymns. We're going to find wonderful great hymns. We're going to find some hymns that need little changes. And we're going to sign garbage like this. That's my personal opinion. Every time I really it's just garbage junk and all that, that's what I, I mean. You may like it. You may enjoy it. You may be, hey, I, I went with the Bible. And I'm going to tell you as far as many people I've met, the ones that say, I like it. That is one of Satan's tools in his toolbox. And they have defiled God. They have defiled the Bible. They won't listen because I like it. Well, the question is, does God like it? Does God approve? And many, too many times you're going to find out the judgment. Wherever judgment you stand, God's not going to like it. Because it's not Bible approved. And I'm going to put the hymn away for a minute. I'm going to tell you what the standard of everything in the world is. It's this Bible. What I can look at, what I can eat, what I can smell, what I can hear, what I can touch is here in the Bible. What pleases God and what doesn't please God. New and Old Testament alone and in the Gospels. I can read of a lot and many and all men that are failures. Men and women. And yet I can read about one that was sinless in perfection and approved of God and obeyed God, Jesus Christ. I can know the ways of salvation. I can know the ways that are not salvation. It's by the Bible. It's not what I think. It's not what anybody thinks. It is thus saith the Lord. That's where it counts. And I'm, I do these studies. I put them out and I get them out. Show them to your friends. 
Put them on your website. Tell people, get them out. For the glory of God that we may grow in the Lord and we may be pleasing to God. And many people are not pleased with the preaching and teaching I do because they want to be in the flesh. They want to be in the world. They want to be, I like it. How about what God likes? Let God be approved. Let God be true and every man a liar. 